Hey pottery people, welcome back to the studio. We are gonna revisit the issue of pinholing today because it seems like a lot of you are struggling with the same thing. And I wanted to share an update with you since my last video that we did about pinholing. So I think I uncovered my mystery of why I had a whole batch of mugs in the kiln that pinholed. And it's kind of funny. Um, I just fired my clay too hot. I was working with cone five clay and I fired it to cone six because that's the glaze temperature that I use. But the cone six glazes will be fine at cone five, so I can still use that combination. But in the future, I'm gonna fire to that little lower temperature to cone five, and I think that's gonna solve my problem. I also wanted to talk a little bit today about some solutions that you can try if you do experience pinholing, because again, all is not lost. You don't need to dump it all in the trash like sometimes we're taught to do. If something's imperfect, a lot of times we're taught to throw it away, but I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. So I'm taking one of my pinhold mugs just to use as an example today and I wanted to tell you a couple things that you could do with this to maybe solve the problem enough so that it's a salvageable piece. So on this one I just sanded the pinholes down a little bit and I, I went in a little too hard with some uh, overly gritty sandpaper and I did scratch the surface a little bit so be aware of that. But when I got out some 120 grit that I had already used on the bottom of some other pots, so it was knocked down a little bit, that was soft enough for me, me to be able to smooth out the pinholes so that they don't feel uncomfortable um, in, in my hand anymore. Um, the other thing I'm gonna try, that you could try too if you get pinholing, is you can put the pots back into a low fire kiln. So you can warm the glazes up just a little bit, like cone 06, maybe a little higher, and sometimes it will melt the glaze, it'll get the glaze back to a melting point just close enough so that those bubbles can kind of relax out of there. Now, that's like a hit or miss thing because it can also make it worse. So I would say if you're doing that, be willing to take a risk. Um, but I'm gonna try that with a couple of these and see if just if it does anything or not. So I'll get back to you with that. And last but not least, I just wanted to say after I sanded these down, I took a majority of them to work and I gave them away to my coworkers and they didn't even notice that they were pinholed. They loved them. So if you have an opportunity to give your work as a gift to someone, just know if they're not a potter, they're not gonna notice pinholes and they're just gonna be so glad to have a piece of your work from, you know, a handmade, a handmade piece usually means a lot to someone. So just keep that in mind. Okay, thank you for joining us and I hope your pinholing issues are getting better and we'll see you next time. Bye pottery people. Time. Okay, hi, I have updates, uh, pinholing updates. So I have just unloaded a glaze fire kiln and I think I've got the mystery solved. I fired everything to cone five this time and I got no pinholing. So it's a great lesson. I mean, I've learned uh, or relearned, go back and double check and make sure you're getting your clay to the right temperature. Cause if you remember my big batch of pinhole pots that I had, I fired them to cone six and that was just a little too high for the clay body that I'm using. So I am happy to report we've got the mystery solved. And from now on we can fire that clay body to the right temperature and get a nice smooth surface. So that's the first thing I wanted to share. The second thing that I thought was kind of interesting was I talked in the earlier part of the video about kind of experimenting with some of the pots that did have pinholing and bringing them up to like a bisque temperature again and just seeing if that would help at all and relax out some of the pinholes. I have not done a bisque fire since then, but I went ahead and just put some of the pinhole pots in with this glaze fire that I just did. And surprisingly, it did smooth out the surface. Like I would say it's 90% smoothed out, feels a lot better than it did before. Now there were some other, you know, kind of consequences. So I had a decal on this mug right here and that high temperature just burned it out. And then also the glaze colors just kind of got weaker. So they lightened a little bit and these marks also kind of spread out and the edges of them are not quite as crisp as they were. So, you know, the glazes were reactivated and, and that that's pretty clear. Um, so, you know, not a horrible result, but there were some kind of undesirable things that came along with uh, this process. So, you know, I would say if you have pinholes and your goal is a really smooth surface, maybe try this. But if you've got a really good surface going on, it will possibly kind of compromise it a little bit. So 
I thought that was kind of a fun thing. And then last, I sort of filled this kiln up with a lot of just test samples because not having had that pinhole issue worked out yet, I didn't want to put a whole batch of like saleable items in there. So I just did a bunch of samples and they all just turned out really fun. And um, I have a lot of material now that I can work with and, and experiment with these combinations even further. So that's just really exciting as well. And um, again, kind of a good reminder to just test and, and play around and, and have fun with it. And when, you know, when things don't work out, you just try something else until you get it. So. It's a happy day here in the studio. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.